Chuk Sogoye is the senior pastor of Resurrection Life Church Johannesburg. Pastor Chuks is a passionate teacher and preacher of the Word of God. He has been blessed by God with the uncanny ability and gift to explain and unpack deep and complex spiritual truths in very easy to understand and apply formats. He is the host of the radio broadcast programs Living the Life and Amazing Power of Woman. Over the years, Pastor Chooks has been actively involved in marketplace ministries. He is an entrepreneur and business consultant with an avid passion for raising other entrepreneurs and business leaders. Here is Pastor Chooks Ogoye. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another evening of studying God's Word together in an online masterclass understanding the goodness of God. My name is Chucks Ugohe. Tonight I am doing episode 160. Episode 160, I have been teaching on the goodness of God. Man, it, for, for close to one and a half years, no, actually two years, more than two years, that I've been teaching on the goodness of God. Since, since uh, September 2019, I've been teaching on the goodness of God. And uh, I have uh, covered it on, on, on so many angles, so many fronts. Uh, our current contemplation is the goodness of God and soul cavities. The goodness of God and soul cavities. Uh, so today uh, will be episode um, 160 and part 11 of that contemplation. Part 11 of that contemplation on soul cavities. We, we talked about what is a soul cavity. A, a soul cavity is a, is a cavity, a gap in the soul. A gap in understanding. And those gaps could be uh, ignorance, what we don't know, uh, what we mis, mis, misunderstand. So misinformation uh, can be a cavity. Uh, ignorance can be a cavity. Uh, lies, lies, outright lies can also be a cavity. And these uh, uh, cavities on the soul, they, they undermine our experience, the fullest experience of the goodness of God. All right? The, these cavities in the soul undermine our fullest experience of the goodness of God. Uh, and they empower the devil. That's what cavities do. Cavities empower the devil and, and make him, uh, uh, give him energy, give him grounds, give him space. The Bible says in, in Ephesians you know, 4.27, we must not give space to the devil. We must give no room to the devil. So cavities give room to the devil. And he's able to do what he's doing. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish because of ignorance. Uh, so uh, ignorance is a cavity. Uh, these are my people perish because the devil is wicked. My people perish for lack of knowledge. So lack of knowledge creates the problem, I mean creates the opportunity for Satan to bring a perishing because all perishing comes from Satan. <laughs> he is the one who came to steal, to, came to, to kill and to destroy. So all perishing comes from him. So, so we, we've been talking about soul cavities and we've been uh, going deep. And now for the last couple of episodes, we have been looking at the soul cavity of death, death, death. Uh, how Satan loves this cavity. This is the, the mother of all cavities. I'm telling you, the cavity of death in the soul is the mother of all cavities because it allows the devil to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Without this cavity, Satan cannot steal, kill, or destroy anybody. He can't because, remember, he was defeated on the cross. He was defeated an eternal defeat on the cross. The, the, the Bible says Jesus took all authority and destroyed him. So the only thing he has right now is the, the, the ability to, to lie, <laughs> to sustain. You know, remember, cavities are lies. So his ability to sustain cavities in the soul of men is what keeps him relevant, is what keeps him operating. And this one cavity around death is what is making him kill and destroy people, including believers. Because there is a cavity, he, he so defends it, he so protects it. The cavity of death. And what is it? It is a lie that 
death is the inevitable, unprecedented end of all believers. It's a lie. It's not true. It's simply not true. So, so many people have believed it. Many people uh, have accepted it. That death is the inevitable end of all believers, of all men. That's not true. I have shown you from scriptures. The Bible says that not all shall sleep. Not all shall sleep. All right. Let's take our journey in the word of God today. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. Verse 18 rather. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. Look at what Jesus says. This is the words of Jesus. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I am him who lives and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys. Did you see that? I have the keys of Hades and of death. Ooh. Did you see that? I have the keys of Hades and of death. I have the keys. I have the keys. And because I have the keys, oh, run the chicken, bo, bo, bo. The devil does not have the keys. I have the keys. Why is it that we believe that the enemy has the keys of death? Jesus says, I have the keys. It's in my hands. When I defeated the devil, I took the keys. It's in my hands. That's what Jesus says. So why do people die? Because, hear this, because they erroneously believe that the keys are in the hands of the devil. So, so they erroneously believe Put the keys in the hands of the devil by a process of reverse fate. So Satan uses that falsehood to kill them because they believe. Jesus says, I have the keys of Hades and of death. It's in my hands. Satan does not have the keys of death anymore. If you believe that he has the keys of death, it's a cavity that empowers him to rob you and to mess you up. You got to get this. You know, this is something similar to somebody walking into a bank with a toy gun. A toy gun. Or, or you know, people run up to you on the street with a toy gun, but you have no idea that it's a toy gun. So, so you see this thing, they pull it out and, you know, point it at you and, and you think it's real. It's a toy gun. There's even no bullet inside. It's made of plastic. But your mind believes it's a gun. And you act, listen, you act like somebody who has a real gun pointed at them. So you hand over the money. <laughs> you hand over the money to something that is fake. But your mind believes that they have a gun. Do you know that Somebody can actually faint, have a heart attack when they point that plastic on you and your mind accepts that <laughs> you don't know that it's plastic. You think it's a gun. Your mind accepts that it's a real gun. You can actually have a heart attack and die. Can you get it? What caused the heart attack? Was it the gun? It was the person thinking that it was a gun. So, so your body responds as if it was a gun. But it was a toy. You didn't know that it was a toy. The mind is very powerful. So, so when you don't know that the key of death is with Jesus, you think it's with the devil and he can kill at any time. He can do whatever. It's a cavity. That's what I'm trying to bring out, church. It's a cavity. It's a lie. Is erroneous. Is empowering the enemy to wreak havoc. Satan does not have the keys of death anymore. Let me read it again for you from the Bible. 
I am he. I'm reading Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Look at it in your own scripture. Look at it in your own Bible. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. I have the keys. I took the keys so that Satan cannot and should not use it. In other words, that door cannot open <laughs> without me. And guess what? I have done that teaching before. God is not a killer. God is not a killer. God is the one that gives life. And I'm going to show you from scriptures right now. God is the one that, God, that gives life. That's what he does. He gives life. He's not a killer. He took the keys of death from Satan. So Satan is not the one holding the keys. So when you think that he's the one holding the keys, you empower him. You empower him by your wrong thinking. That's what we mean by a cavity. All right. I want you to get this. <laughs> let, me, let me show you another scripture. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I'm going to read from verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All, all, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So, there is no authority in the earth that is outside of my control. All authority on earth is in my hands. All power on earth is in my hands. That's what Jesus is saying. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. All authority in heaven and on earth so, so where is death? Where is death? All authority is in the hands of Jesus. He took it. He took it. He took it. All authority is in his hands. Death has no authority anymore. Get it, child of God. Get it, people of God. Death has no authority anymore. All authority is because we don't believe it. That's what creates that cavity. And because of that cavity, Satan is empowered to wreak havoc. All authority has been given to Jesus. He took it in heaven and on earth. So Satan does not have authority. Death does not have authority. It's your believing otherwise that empowers him to wreak havoc. He doesn't have authority. No, Satan does not have authority anymore. It's your thinking that make, gives him authority. It's your erroneous belief that gives him authority. It's the cavity in your soul that gives him authority. See, uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Romans chapter 8, verse, verse 5. Okay. How am I doing with time? Romans 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Did you see this? For to be carnally minded is death, all death that occurs, please hear this, all death that occurs since after Jesus came out from the grave is because of carnal mindedness. To be carnally minded is death. <laughs> what does it mean to be carnally minded? To think that death is an inevitable end of every believer is to be carnally minded. 
For you to think that death is your inevitable end is, can, is carnal mindedness. And God is saying, get out of carnal mindedness. It's hurting you. For you to think that Satan has the keys of death is carnal mindedness. Carnal mindedness is a mind that does not align with what God said in his word. <laughs> a mind that is out of whack with what God said in his word is a carnal mind. A spiritual mind is a mind that agrees with what God said in his word. A carnal mind is a mind that does not agree. So, if the word of God says Jesus has the key of death, and you don't believe, or you believe, you believe, you know, that Satan has it. In other words, you are disagreeing with the word. Your mind is carnal, and that is what produces death. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. For to be carnally minded is dead. So to think that your body is mortal is to be carnally minded. To think your body is mortal is to be carnally minded. When the word of God tells you that God has lifted you <laughs> out of the do dominion of death and darkness and placed you and seated you at the right hand of God and you're still thinking that you're, you are mortal. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 11, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead, if he dwells in you, the same spirit that dwells in you quickens you, makes alive the mortal body. So the body is no longer mortal. The body has been quickened. So if you think otherwise, you are carnally minded. All death come from carnal mindedness. All death come from carnal mindedness. It doesn't matter what it is. All death come from carnal. Get that carnal mindedness out of your mind. I know what I'm saying is not popular, but it's okay. I will say it. I'll say it. Let me show you. Jesus is life. Do you have Jesus? You have life. The Bible says it. He who has the Son has life. So if you've got Jesus in you, you've got life. First John. Sorry, First Timothy. First Timothy, sorry. Chapter 6, verse 13. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 13. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate who gives life to all things. God gives life to all things including his children. He gives life. Jesus is our life. He gives to all things life, not death. That's what, what I want you to know. Our Father gives life only, not death. Satan is the one who kills. So, so we need to accept it. We need to accept it that Jesus is the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. So, so how can I have resurrection in me, how can I have life in me and still be believing that I have death? No, I you gotta get it. You have life. Acts 17, verse 25. Acts 17, 25. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. Since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. See, this is what needs to happen. The reason why there is death in the body is because there is death in the mind. That's why. Because there is death in the mind. Your belief in death is creating a cavity in your mind. That's why there is death in your body and there will eventually, you know, be termination of life in your body because there's death in your mind. If there's no death in your mind, there will not be death in your body. If there's no death in your mind, there will not be death in your body. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So if there's no death in your mind, there's, there won't be death in your body. The devil has placed death in the mind of people. And, and that death that he placed in the mind of people is what is making him have effect on their bodies and in their world and in their finances because they believe in death in their mind. This is what needs to happen. This is what needs to happen. Jesus is our life. 
The Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says he is the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11 says he is the resurrection. John eleven twenty six. 26. He is the resurrection and the life. So what needs to happen is that Jesus needs to take over your mind. Jesus needs to take over your mind. Life needs to take over your mind. You need to stop thinking death. You need to accept, uh, stop accepting death as an inevitability in your mind. Your mind has to become completely taken over by Jesus. When Jesus takes over your mind and life takes over your mind, in other words, you're no longer thinking death. You're no longer accepting death. This is what the purpose of this teaching. We are trying to help the body of Christ accept life in the mind. I have life. Say it. I have life. I have life in my mind. There is no thought of death. There is no acceptance of the, of, 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 of the inevitability of death. It's not true. The inevitability of death has been taken care of by Jesus' death on the cross. He said, I have the keys of death. I have the keys of Hades. So death is not an inevitability for the believer. No. don't. Death in your mind. Is what is producing death in your DNA and that's why we are aging because we believe and you know what this lie has been coming from so long so long and we were born with it so it's, it's in our genes death is in our genes but I'm telling you now that we are in the generation that God is rewiring our genes the Word of God the revelation of of this gospel of life that's what I call it the gospel of life, the revelation of the gospel of life is going to our genes. Is going into our genes and correcting the error in our genes and doing some gene editing to take out life. But it starts with the, our soul being edited to take out the cavities of death. The belief in death that has created cavities is rottenness. It is attracting bacteria of demonic assaults in our soul because we believe in death. So it's created some cavities in our soul. And that is what is empowering the devil to work in our bodies. If there's no death in your mind, there will not be death in your body. There will not be death in your world. Let me say that again. If there's no death in your mind, in your thinking, in your emotions, if that death you know subject has been dealt with in your soul there will not be death in your body there will not be death in your world so we are that generation that are standing on the word of god and allowing the word of god to walk itself through walk itself through into our cells you've got maybe 50 trillion cells in your body every one of those cells must be redeemed from death every one of those cells no more death in your cells no more death in your system because once you believe it it becomes your reality you got to believe it i have been raised with christ from the dead that's what scripture says why is it that when we read it we interpret it to mean that we've been spiritually raised yes jesus was spiritually raised but he was also physically raised so, we have been raised from the dead. The way Jesus was raised is the way I'm raised. Hallelujah. So, let, let, let's, let's read another scripture. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. These things are in the Bible. It's true. The problem is that we've interpreted it and looked at it wrong. And we have not believed the word of God. It says, whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed, sorry, 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 I'm reading verse 9. Uh, 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 I, I want 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Yeah, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 is on the screen. It says, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this is the purpose of God. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil that he might destroy the works of the devil death is the work of the devil he's been destroyed he's been destroyed death is the work of the devil he's been destroyed you got to believe it <laughs> it's been destroyed you have to believe it 
So if he's been destroyed, another version say he's been dissolved. Is that he might dissolve the works of the devil, that he might undo, he might reverse, that's amplified Bible, he might undo, reverse the works of the devil. He's been dissolved, he's been destroyed, he's been undone. So there's no death in yourselves anymore. It's the truth. You have life. There's no death in yourselves anymore. What is keeping it there is wrong belief. For you to think it's still there, then that's why it's there. Hey! It's no longer there. Believe the word. Believe the word. How do you believe it? Keep confessing it. Keep confessing it. Keep meditating on it. Keep confessing it. Keep meditating on it. Keep confessing it. What you meditate on, what you confess repeatedly, you will believe. Let me say that again. What you meditate on and confess repeatedly, you will eventually believe it. If you believe the word of God, that death has been destroyed, because that's the work of the devil. Death is the work of the devil. You will, that truth will sink into your DNA. That truth will sink into your cells and dissolve whatever death that is left there. Yes. Every cell in your body is going through transformation right now. That's what the Spirit of God wants to do. That's the work of the Spirit of God to, in your life to go through transformation and get rid of death. See, once death leaves, listen, once death leaves our mind, death will leave our bodies. What it means, Kai, Lebo, Shaka, let me explain. Once death leaves our minds, the mind of man will come up with inventions that produce safety systems that negate death. The more there is death washed off our minds, the more the creations of the mind of man have immunity against death. You know, I, I, I said it in a previous broadcast. There are three things, three ways that people die. Sickness and disease, trauma, and old age. All deaths are caused by these three things. Sickness and disease, trauma, old age. Nobody dies by any other way. So, if death is no longer in the mind of man, man will come up with inventions that prolong life. Inventions that have built into them safety systems that do not destroy life. Yes. Yes. So, so as we begin to believe this, I said it before, as we begin to believe this and begin to wash our minds of death, man's mind will begin to come up with, with inventions and innovations that preserve life. Whether in terms of healthcare, whether in terms of inventions, you know, uh, motor vehicles, airplanes, and so on, whether in terms of in, uh, even dealing with old age and, 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 and all the things that come with it. Once our minds no longer have debt, we will come up with ideas and inventions that, that secure man from debt. That's what I'm trying to say tonight. That's what I'm trying to say. So, we need to start believing and start confessing so that the word of God can go in. You know, the Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among them. The word of God needs to become your flesh. The word of God needs to become the molecules in your body. The gospel of life needs to become flesh to you. There's a gospel of life. The Bible says he brought life and immortality to light. So when you believe it, you believe it by visualizing it, or meditating on it and then confessing it. When you believe something and confess it repeatedly, sorry, when you meditate on something and confess it repeatedly, you will believe it. And when you believe it, it goes in, into your molecular structure and gets rid of the lies that are there. Hallelujah. Get rid of the lies that are there. Death has been destroyed. That's what the Bible says. All the works of the devil has been reversed. There is not one work of the devil that is left. Bible says, for this purpose was he made manifest, that he might undo, he might destroy, that he might dissolve, that he might reverse the works of the devil. All works of the devil has been undone. Believe that word. Amen. 
<laughs> the Bible says, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing can separate us. And then he goes on to list, Romans chapter 8, verse 37, going down to 39. He goes on to list the things that cannot separate us from the love of Christ. One of them is death. He said, death cannot separate us from the love of Christ. Why can't death separate us from the love of Christ? The love of Christ gives us life, right? The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. And that gift gave us life. The love of God gives us life. Meaning, <laughs> if death has been destroyed and death is no longer an issue, it can't separate us from the love of God because it's not there. It's been dealt with. It's been destroyed. It's not there. It's no longer there. Satan does not have the keys of death. The Satan does not have the control of death because when the Bible speaks of keys, it speaks of control. Satan does not have the keys of death. He doesn't have the control of death anymore. Jesus says, the keys of death are in my hands. It's in my hands. So we are dying because of our ignorance. We are dying because of what we don't believe. So death cannot separate us from the love of Christ. Why? Because death has been, has been destroyed. So it can't pull us away from the love of Christ. How can something that is destroyed pull us? Can't it? It can't pull us because it's been destroyed. All right. Let me, let me take last scripture and we are done. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. Romans chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. This message I'm sharing is so important to God. It's so important to the Holy Spirit. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 8. Going all the way to 9. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Did we die with Christ? The answer is yes. So if we died with him, we believe we shall also live with him. So when he was raised from the dead, we rose with him. We died with him, we rose with him. He is not in the grave, I am not in the grave. What is the grave? The region of death. He's been raised from the dead. I have been raised from the dead. I've been raised from the region of death. I'm not there anymore. Where am I? I'm seated at the right hand of God. I'm seated there in the presence of life, absolute life. That's where I'm sitting. I, you got to accept where you're sitting. Knowing this, verse 9, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. So if he dies no more, then also you, you die no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Death also does not have dominion over you. Does not have dominion over your body. Does not have dominion over your mind. No, it doesn't. So exercise your right in Christ. Exercise your inheritance in Christ. You've got life. Speak life to your cells. That if whatever death that is there, that is causing the cells in your body to malfunction, speak life, it will be corrected. <laughs> speak life, your faith will correct it. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. Your faith will correct it. Your faith in life will bring life to your cells. Wherever there's death there, it will be corrected. My time is up for today. I want you to know Jesus is life. Jesus lives in my soul. Jesus lives in my spirit. Jesus lives in my body. There's no death anywhere around me. My soul has Jesus. My spirit has Jesus. My body has Jesus. Scriptures tell me so. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I've got Jesus in my mind. I've got Jesus in my mind. I've got Jesus in my spirit. I've got the word of God in my mind. So I don't have death. And if there's no death in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, ooh, can you see that? All we need to do is believe it and it becomes our reality. I'm done for tonight. God bless you. I hope I helped you. I hope I shed light. Let me pray. Father, thank you for the revelation of life. Thank you, Lord, for causing your people all over the world to increasingly come into the depth of this revelation so that we can sanctify ourselves up to the DNA level and, and edit ourselves and get rid of death that is there. Why? Because Jesus has already gotten rid of it. So I thank you that an ongoing work begins in the heart 
in the body, in the soul of all your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Good night. We'll continue tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, with, with, with this thought. And we're going to, that will be episode 161. Good night. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.